So this session is uh, not actually one where I want to kill you all with death by PowerPoint. Um, in fact, I don't have any slides, and that's intentional. So what I wanted was some time on the calendar where we could actually talk about next steps for NFE, what works right now, um, things that we should be doing in the short, medium term, maybe give these two gentlemen some time to talk more about what they had on their presentation the other day. So um, if I can put you guys on the spot, if you want to just give a 30-second summary of where we are with MSI pass-through right now, PCI pass-through, uh, interrupt pass-through, yeah. Yes, yeah, so actually, uh, PCI pass-through now, uh, so along with MSI support, uh, is uh, is available in uh, kernel 4.11. Uh, so you don't need a special pieces on the QMU side. Um, so we exercised already the feature. Uh, it works fine, uh, including with uh, Livert 3.0 uh, and uh, Livert 3.1. Uh, so if you have, if you want to have a, f uh, a full security. Uh, so you, you need to have uh, an ITS as well on guest side and uh, uh, on, uh, on host side as well. Otherwise, you are obliged to, uh, to commute to uh, an uh, unsafe uh, secure mode, uh, so IRQ assignment mode. So what about the virtual IMMU? Do you have that? Where do we stand with the V IMMU side of things right now? Ah, okay. So this was your, your point. Uh, uh, so VIU MMU for, for the timing, we do not have any uh, proper solution. Uh, there, there has been a, a model de uh, developed by uh, Xilinx for the virtual system MMU V2, uh, which is not uh, really upstream, it's uh, in uh, the QMU Xilinx tree. Um, and then we, uh, there was a, a job done by uh, Broadcom on this. Uh, but uh, which is not upstreamed uh, at the moment, and uh, we plan to uh, to pursue the work. So I sent an email yesterday. Yes, please. So there's some there's some ongoing work at ARM in order to provide um, a virtual IOMMU of some sort into a guest. It's not as in it's in the works at the moment. We trying to we aim for an RFC in the following few months. It's not ready yet, but trying to have something that would be, would hide the differences basically between all the various implementation and have something that is more of a virtual IOMMU rather than the virtual SMMU. So there's, a, there's a difference here. Right, right. Okay, so, because what I want to do is just capture the state of play exactly. So, so go ahead, Christopher. Yes, yeah, so just to clarify, there are, there's, there's two basic approaches, right? So what Eric was talking about is virtual IMMU support in QMU that emulates a real ARM SMMU, yep. which we're pursuing because that's useful for a number of reasons, and, and it may be reference. useful in this context as well. Right, what yeah. Mark is talking about is an in-kernel abstract IMMU model that you present to the guest so you can do pass-through inside the guest. So these are two complementary or competing approaches, as you will. We're looking at both of them, and I think everybody's aware it's a super important thing, and it's a natural next step. Yeah, good. Okay, so uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll flesh this out a little bit, and then we'll come on to the general NFE use cases. It's not all about device pass-through, but just to just to complete the device pass-through piece using VFIO, if I'm not doing the, the VIOMMU, but I'm just you know running OVS and DPDK or something like this, is there anything else missing as far as the, the, the core infrastructure, as far as you're concerned, Eric? Or uh, as no, uh, in, in the core infrastructure, there is nothing more uh, missing today. So uh, the next step is to implement the virtual IOMMU. Yep. And uh, so for that, we, we have two approaches, the virtio based approach uh, pushed by, by ARM, uh, by Will, and uh, the other approach, which would be based, uh, which would start on the, the pure emulated uh, uh, virtual, um, pure emulated IOMMU. Uh, which looks like uh, the approach uh, chosen by uh, x86, Intel IOMMU. And um, so there is a possibility to accelerate typically with uh, VHOST uh, um, to have the IOTLB device uh, integration. Mm -hmm. um, and for VFIO also, there is a kind of integration. Uh, and for a host only, if I'm, not, if I'm not passing through into a guest, if I'm just running VFIO in user space, 
we've got what we need right right now, right? For OVS, yeah. DPDK, yeah. you know. And so, because I've learned a lot in the last few weeks and months about the use cases here, and it seems a lot of people, what they what they want is they want to be able to run VNFs. They want to be able to run virtual network functions inside a VM and, and, and have the virtual IOMMU and do things there. But a lot of people actually, they want to start by running vSwitch, OVS, uh, in the host to provide network services into guests. So if we can at least have that basic use case uh, enabled, it sounds like we're, we're making progress, which is, which is good. OK. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, just to finish this out, because partly for the video and everybody else, right? So I think the last piece that I'm aware of for the basic use case is um, there's initial IORT support. Um, there needs to be a lot more debugging and investigation around people's implementations of that. I'm aware of, I've spoken with Charles this week, I don't think he's in here, but I've spoken with Charles about a missing piece of the spec because the initial IORT only supports single socket. There's a missing NUMA piece if you're on a 2P system. We actually don't really express what we need there. Um, anything else, IORT or anything else mi missing? Uh, are you talking about uh, the IORT uh, table on uh, kernel yes. on uh, host side on or host on side. Uh, guest on side? The host side? Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, you have all the pieces now because uh, there is uh, uh, SCPI support for SMMU. It's a numer issue, apparently. I need, I need more detail on it, but they're telling me that there's... So if, if, if there are issues, please... Right. Know, yep. Uh, work that out. Yep. That's why I'm saying it here, because I just want everyone to be aware that we know there's something. And we can know exactly what's missing. Correct. Just yep. <laughs> yep. Well, this is an attempt to at least start to say, let's do this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's get to the, to the bottom of it. And, and how do we... And Okay, so just to build on that, um, again, we have only about 20 minutes here, so... How do we want to capture, because again, we have a lot of point-to-point -point meetings and, and that's, that's useless for sharing with everybody else what the problems are and how we want to do this. How do we want to share status, what needs doing? I don't want phone calls, I don't want all this stuff. Is there a mailing list, a wiki? W where do you guys want to capture what, what needs doing? I'm, I'm happy with the uh, article on mailing list, for example. Okay. Okay, so if, if maybe after this, if I write something up, and send it to Eric and, and Drew and you guys and say, here's what I think. And if one of you could take that and turn it into something actually useful and maybe send a summary out, I don't have to send it. If someone else could send it, but I can send you some thoughts that I've got and other, other people can send thoughts they've got. Who wants to take point in sending a note out? Christopher, Eric? Send it to us, we'll figure it out between us. What okay. And, and I think I, I'm not entirely sure of what the missing piece, I mean, I, we, we have a pretty clear picture of what needs to be done and it's already in progress. Right. Yeah. And then we'll work between us to figure out what, you know, if we feel that there's something that hasn't been disseminated correctly. Be happy to so, right. So it's not so much about, it, 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 I feel the people that are doing the actual work on this are well connected and they know each other. The problem we have is a lot of vendors are involved. A lot of people are peripherally connected into this. And I want to make sure that they have some notion that here's what works, here's what doesn't, here's what's in flight. So that's what I'm looking to, that's the reason I want something sent out is for anybody else who might want to get involved to say, oh, okay, they're working on these pieces and, you know, and if I want to get involved, clearly these are the suspects I should talk to and, and, and all of that. Um, yeah. Good, good. Okay, so, good. Okay, so that's enough, I think, on the the uh, the uh, um, device pass through and so on. And it's really great work, you guys have done amazing, amazing stuff here. Um, Bob, do you want to talk a little bit about where we stand with the OPNFV project and armband and all that kind of stuff? Yes. So the uh, for those not familiar with the armband project, it is the project that I run in uh, Linux Foundation OPNFE to bring the OPNFE reference stack releases that happen twice a year onto ARM servers. They follow a six month cadence of releases and so the next release, uh, they follow river names. So Danube is uh, targeted for March 27th uh, and Armband is w uh, well in hand to be released on, on that, uh, with that release. Um, in the past we've had 
pretty basic coverage for Ubuntu only with the fuel installer only. Now the Red Hat team um, is working on the um, the triple uh, O and uh, RDO support that's needed for the Apex installer. So that will allow us to have CentOS and uh, Ubuntu support, but that will not be ready by the end of this month. Right. So we expect it for the e-release um, in September, uh, roughly time frame. Uh, the other thing that we've done in uh, armband with a day new release is begin to expand out some of the feature products, projects. You know, SDN VPN uh, or BGP VPN, uh, service function chaining the doctor project which is high availability so we're adding a lot of the feature projects uh, that we hadn't been covering so we're getting better and better coverage uh, adding more and more uh, arm servers to our ferros labs we have the qualcomm team now participating uh in the armband project uh, applied micro has a guy that came on since the last connect as well so we've, we're getting good participation from uh, from the community in armband so Bunch of caviam guys. There's a lot of people involved. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. Um, um, two thoughts I had there, Bob. Uh, so, so I think people getting more informed on NFV. Um, certainly, I've I've seen presentations. I've given one. I can send out some slides from. I'm not the expert on this, but I'll throw that out somewhere as well. A deck I did before, just acronym bingo, explaining you know what do all these different things mean. Um, if somebody wanted to, I mean, I know there's SDN Central, there's lots of websites. If someone had to go and get informed on OPNFV or NFV in general, where would you send them? I, I, they should go to opnfv.org uh, and then they go to the wiki. Yep. On the wiki, uh, wiki.opnfv.org, you'll find all of the project names. Every project, every sub project within that has a description of what they're doing, what the scope is, who's involved. They have their meeting minutes, um, so it's a really open open project. And there's some other, you know, documentation. The releases are there. You can download the ISOs. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, you know, when we created the ISO image for the Colorado release, the orange guys just grabbed it, yep. put it onto some ARM servers, and got it running in two days. They didn't yeah. even need any help. Um, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty useful site. So good. So. Um We've also had some other folks getting more involved in the community. We've had packet.net, others kind of appearing and saying, this is interesting stuff. I wonder if, uh, as we get to the D release, we can uh, maybe chat to some of these guys and say, can we stand up a couple of machines people can play with? We, we, could, we could talk about that. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone else playing with OPNFV and have, have thoughts on things they see that should be happening or, or ways you'd like to get involved? Now's a good time to throw ideas out there. Nobody? Don't be shy. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention uh, that's happening in the community that's relevant to the TSC meeting that's happening this afternoon or at noon um, is there's beginning to be a bifurcation of the use cases in OpenFE. To date, the traditional, what I call the conventional approach is OpenStack, you know, Open Daylight or some other controller, KVM. VM-based deployed uh, VNFs. Now there's a project called Open Retriever, which is going to uh, put in some shims, uh, Magnum and Career. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm pr pronouncing that right. And Zune yeah. for allowing containers to fit in and look to OpenStack like you know like the same interface as for VMs, but running VNFs on containers. Um, and so what we're seeing is, is that particularly at the network edge, uh, people are wanting a lighter weight virtualization uh, approach uh, and they're wanting to use, you know, con you know containers and container related, ma you know, management uh, uh, facilities, uh, Kubernetes, Docker, so forth and so on, and, and do, you know, do a sort of a lighter weight. Um, uh, this is particularly for virtual CPE use cases. So that's going to introduce some new challenges. Um, one of the big questions I think that is starting to be looked at is how do you do data plane acceleration? You know, can you use DPDK? It's not, you can't just use it today um, or ODP in containers. You need to start doing some, you know, some work to try and figure out how does that fit into something that's tied in with the kernel, with the with the containers. So, I 
think I think there's been some work there on you know, X86, for example, but but it's definitely an open question, isn't it? Uh, so, okay, so, so and then going up the stack a bit more, maybe put you on the spot for one more thing. I think we when we talk about NFV, if when we're certainly I fell into this trap early on, trying to dig out of the buzzword bingo. It, it's it's very easy to fall into the everything's about data plane acceleration, and we're going to just focus on that one use case. But actually. Uh, in, in a in a in a hybrid environment that people might have initially, where they've got, you know, another architecture that that's still quite popular, but we'll work on that uh, deployed, and then they're bringing some ARM machines in. Uh, they might keep their, you know, data plane stuff over there initially, and bring in some some ARM VMs to run other, you know, VNFs. Uh, and so, uh, are there specific sort of low-hanging fruit use cases that you see that that Again, the broader community would be interested in looking at um, in the short term. So I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Are you asking for the conventional KVM-based? Correct. You know, if you want to just hit the ground running right now without, you know, solving device pass-through and, and all these other more, I think, corner cases in, in many cases, right? Yeah. What's the low-hanging fruit? You know, VM-based, just deploy VNFs and off you go. What's the well, there's an open source VNF uh, called Clearwater. It's a virtual IMS for voice over IP. That's in the functional test suite of OPNFE, and so the Armband project runs that all the time. Yep. So that can be pulled down and tested. Um, virtual EPC fits in real well with a conventional um, you know, VM-based. Uh, I'm not sure if the EPC any is evolved packet core. There's yeah, there's lots packet of core. Yeah, yeah. So at the, here, right? so at that core, you know, more closer to the core. That's where, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that containers will take over completely, but it'll, they'll, both cases are useful. And uh, so closer to the core is where the conventional VMs will, will likely stay, um, okay. and people will get more creative at the edge uh, with containers. Right. So um, there, there's a couple of open source um, virtual EPCs out there. Um, uh, is work needed on those in, in this that? community? Do people need to be testing and doing anything there in this community? Or I is think it, it would be great if you know if people w have an interest in that um, and just to play around with NFV, uh, doing something with Clearwater or maybe one of these you know small um, you know, sort of toy o EPCs uh, might be an interesting thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we we have I think another uh, five minutes. So um, please go ahead, Eric. Yeah. Virtual functions. So the the hardware. Well, I'll just give you an example of the hardware that we have uh, in the uh, in, in Nia Software hosts the Ferros Lab. So they have some AMD Soft Iron. They have a lot of Cabium Thunder X. Uh, they have some Applied Micro uh, systems, both older Mustangs and some of the newer stuff. Um, and then, uh, for some reasons with regards to the way that Ferros Labs are managed, we don't actually officially have uh, NXP um, LS2 and LS1 systems in there, just because you know there um, there's a couple of issues with regards to IPMI and how you power them on and power them off. That can be worked around, uh, but NXP we, we're running this on NXP hardware, and in fact. Um, we're we're going. We have a, pro, a side project this year to um, create a, a a full OPNFE pod with small mini ITX boards based on a Marvell uh, Armada 8040, uh, and so that's going to be a really exciting project where we're actually going to create a. The Pharos is the name of the project that defines the lab specification for five nodes with a jump server that you deploy and has con three controllers and two compute nodes. The VNFs run on the compute nodes. So, um, uh, I mean, the only thing I would say is, is that the memory requirements are quite high for the controllers, and that's because of OpenStack and particularly the SDN controllers, things like Open Daylight. These things consume, they're based on Java, um, uh, so Ono's same thing. Lots of memory required for that, but you can have fairly low-end hardware for uh, for the compute nodes to run. Let's say a virtual CPE. It could be a quite small uh, ARM-based processor. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple minutes. Other other people. You know, just the purpose here. And we. I think we're going to keep a session on the calendar at other 
connects just to keep the NFB people connected or people interested in this. So what else is anyone else seeing with, with NFB interests or things that you think we should be doing in Lenaro elsewhere for ARM, obviously? Um, anybody want to throw anything out there? Everything's great and you're all happy. <laughs> Oh, I, I would certainly love to see the container work uh, ramp up within Lenaro and applied to NFE use cases uh, moving forward because the time is now where it's starting to take off. So, right. so containers, obviously, yeah. that's a change in, and that's another capture. So, for example, people, you know, working with containers within Lenaro uh, can actually go and check out this open retriever project. That's one formalized project in OPNFE that's on the wiki. Um, and you can actually see what they're doing, what components they're putting together, um, and, f you know, shadow that or even contribute to it. Anyone can contribute to these projects. So it's quite open, right? So, so the whole container versus virtualization discussion is pretty much <coughs> your level of isolation you're interested in. So can anybody fill me in on sort of what's the, the, the foundational requirement for virtualization for the V and N and F V in the first case and why containers would apply in some case and virtual and like full system virtualization wouldn't in the other case? Yeah. Is it just that people forgot to think about containers and it's a better approach for what you're trying to do or like what's the story there? I, I think it, I think it ca comes down to um, these use cases at the edge, like virtual, virtual CPE, where they have um, kind of a, uh, a fluid, distributed environment, okay? And so they want to run some things at the cloud. Sometimes they want to deploy an application down at the edge, though, on a customer premise equipment. So the container, you know, technology is, is a really good, uh, lightweight way to spin up and, and run a, a, a certain kind of virtual ne network function application at the edge, um, and they just don't want a lot of overhead. It, ta it takes a lot of memory, and it takes a lot of time to start up a VM and run some of these applications. Th that's where I'm probing on this, and I think we follow up on the, the what I want to do is I, I want to have a specific set of conversations with people about the container versus VM thing, because I think what's happened is there's been a lot of enablement work we've had to do to get the, the full VM story, especially device pass through, lots of other stuff, and I mm. think that um, it's very easy Containers are, of course, the flavor of the month in the industry, yeah. right? It's very easy to say, well, you know, wouldn't it be great if we put everything in a container? Um, and in many cases with these edge devices, you know, y you don't have a, a full-featured set of hardware. You don't have an SMMU that, that, that works in a standard way, that's wired up in a standard way. And so it's very easy to turn around and say, well, I'm just going to throw everything in a container because that helps me right now. I think there are legitimate use cases, but I think... It is something we should specifically follow up and have people have conversations and say, you know, which of these are actual use cases that you want and need, and which of them are necessity because, hey, right now the hardware's not there, I can't make this work, the thing I want to do, so I'm going to do it this way, and make sure we separate the two so that, yeah, you want to add anything? So, so I've, yeah, this bifocal thing, right, can be confusing, I think, for a lot of people because people end up being like, oh, is it containers? Is it virtualization? Like, what is it, right? Yeah, so, be both. so I, yeah, think, be both. I think the point is if you can run containers across the board, great, right? It's yeah. faster, uh, it's run Docker, it's done, right? You just move on with your life. But I'm guessing that's not the case, so I think people should be sort of more, I think they should be more specific about why you need virtualization, real virtualization, and when you need it, because that can make the people who want to just push containers everywhere calm down a little bit and step back from that. Uh, and then I think it'll be more clear from everybody. So, so getting a, a better handle on this from whoever really understands the use cases would be fantastic. So we'll go and, we'll, we'll, we'll go and follow up on that, because I think what we want to do in, in Lenaro is, is obviously NFE is, is becoming a, 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 you know, you were very prescient setting up armband. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's clearly uh, an area that we want to put a lot of focus in between groups, right, between LAG and LNG and, mm -hmm. and so on. So I think one action for us out of this whole week and in general, given the, way, given the, the good work that's happened to enable this technology is to have a regular dialogue between the different groups and to say, to capture these use cases, to have it on the wiki, to, to provide people with pointers. So I think maybe an action for, for Bob and I is to go and you know just put some stuff on the Lenaro wiki, point people to resources, we'll follow up with you guys on the mailing list, and then we'll try to solicit people's input as to what their use cases are for the different pieces. 
Yeah, so two things there. <clears throat> One, I think there's still an interest in, you know, spinning up some you know, sort of reference platforms for OPNFE within Lenaro. We didn't yes. really have that conversation here, but the the Lenaro reference, you know, platforms and what the Danube release are really close in terms of kernel and, and so forth. So we can we can achieve that more easily, so we should continue to pursue that. Agreed. Um, and we could take that offline. Yeah. Uh, and then um, Christopher, if you'd like to get some more information, I can definitely put you in touch with, uh, there's a lot of people, for example, at Ericsson who are, are, are involved in um, some of these container use case uh, work. They're actually doing projects and proposing ideas in the community, in OPNV community. So there's uh, three or four individuals that I could put you in touch with and you could have a duck. It's not him. It's it's. It, I think okay. it's pulling. It's it's basically connecting the community so that we can say if you if you're in, uh, we're not a silo. But let's say we let's say we think about ourselves as a silo for a second. If you're in the Lonaro space and you're not in the OpenFE space, but you want to understand, or you're in the mainstream Linux, ARM Linux community, and you want to understand this, I think we can help pull some of that in and just put it somewhere on the Lonaro wiki or something, so you don't have to find it all out. I could put some presentations up there that could be quite informative and useful. It's at your level, obviously. Yeah. When, you have the, when you have the next steering committee discussion and people say, should we do containers or virtualization? The answer should be, well, for all these cases, you need virtualization. And for all these cases, you need yeah. containers. And that mm -hmm. needs to be clear in everybody who makes a decision on what we focus on in these mm -hmm. environments. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the point is. Yeah. All right. I, I just want to make a very Martin. quick point here. Currently today, there are no plans in the roadmap inside of LEG to support NFE, right? We don't have that. Two, I understand that we have software that's available with, through the ERP, but we have no hardware and we have no people. So I, I, I'm slightly, I don't wanna say terrified, but <laughs> it's concerning to me that we're saying we have the plan, we've got the solution, we all have this session, and then we walk away for six months, come back, and we wonder why there's no progress, right? There's no hardware, there's no people, and there's no roadmap inside of LEG to do any of this work, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to ruin the parade, but... Yeah. Right. So, that, that's... <laughs> Just yeah, absolutely. being a realist. That's good. Um, so we're, we're out of time for that session. Um, it was fairly ad hoc, but that was the purpose, uh, just to get some general discussion going of some kind. Uh, we'll take some follow-up. Martin, I think you and I and Bob can, can try to write something up and start some threads and just keep this cadence going. I agree we have to put resources in. Uh, I want to hand over. I don't know who's speaking next, but someone is due to speak about now. Do you want to take the mic and off you go?